Breaking tonight, new questions for the White House as ISIS scores a second major victory in a week. Just today, we heard reports that the Islamic State has overrun a key prize in Syria, the 2,000-year-old city of Palmyra, described as a historic treasure. It comes just days after the fall of Ramadi in Iraq, and it left the administration again defending a strategy under fire. There's a lot of Monday morning quarterbacking going on here. Overall, what we're talking about here is a strategy that builds up the capacity of local fighters to fight for their own country. Uh, and that is a significant departure from the strategy that's advocated by many Republicans, uh, which is uh, the large-scale uh, American military deployment in Iraq and in Syria uh, that didn't work so well the last time we tried it. Earlier, I spoke to Charles Krauthammer, a Fox News contributor, syndicated columnist, and author of the New York Times bestseller, Things That Matter, that has been newly released in paperback with a brand new section on the Obama presidency. Charles, thank you for being here. And so, Josh Earnest doing what the White House has done for months now in this strategy, which is create a false choice. It's either, you know, all guns blazing, another invasion into Iraq, or what President Obama is doing. Well, that's exactly right. You present a false choice like that. And then what your only option is uh, indecision, passivity, and defeat, which is what the Obama administration has chosen. When you hear Josh Earnest talking about the situation and saying, well, it's a setback, but really our strategy is working. This is Baghdad Bob during the invasion of uh, Iraq itself in 2003 with the U.S. closing in on the capital and the official spokesman for Saddam pretending the Americans were on the run. This is embarrassing at this point. And in fact, there was a third strategic advance by ISIS today. They seized a key border crossing between Syria and Iraq, which will allow them to resupply more easily the Anbar provinces that are under, province that's under their control and Ramadi. So this is a serious threat. And I, I think there is no denying that the strategy is an abject failure. And in fact, you wonder about how serious is a president in the first place? Let me give you one example. The Pentagon said that in the Battle of Ramadi, a key capital in Anbar, we had 135 airstrikes in the last month. Just to give you a comparison, in the war in Kosovo, which is of infinitely less strategic importance to the United States, we were averaging 10,000 sorties a month. And we were doing 165 in Ramadi. This is not serious. This is for show. This is for the president to pretend he's doing something, but actually and actively and knowingly not doing anything. They, they seem to, you know, to be appealing to people's reluctance to, to do another 2003-style invasion. And yet more and more we are hearing people from both sides of the aisle uh, talk about how that we don't have to go that far, but we do have to make a decision about the road we're on now because it's going to come back to haunt us. This is Richard Clark, who was on another channel today, who worked for Reagan, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, and Bill Clinton, and listen to what he had to say about it. It's a nation. It's got a couple of million people. It's larger than about three dozen nations that are in the UN. It straddles the Iraqi border. It's a country. And it's going to train terrorists and send them places like here. People need to decide if they want to go back into Iraq even a little bit. But they have to, to stop ISIS, because otherwise we're going to have a terrorist state. And it will get around to threatening us here. Charles, your thoughts? Which was why we need a serious strategy. He's absolutely right. This is a state. This is al-Qaeda on steroids. Al-Qaeda was hiding in caves that had the support of the Afghan government, but it was in the periphery. As we learned from the Osama bin Laden documents that were now just released, he knew that that was a, a sideshow. The real show was the middle of the Middle East. It was North Africa. And that's where ISIS is. ISIS has skipped over the al-Qaeda stages. Oh, oh, oh. Bin Laden's idea was to weaken the infidel first and then establish a caliphate. I think the genius of ISIS to understand that the West, particularly the Obama administration, is a demoralized enemy. You can establish the caliphate now and you will gain adherence, which is exactly what's happening. We went into Afghanistan because they harbored terrorists who aimed to destroy the United States. And what they're now saying is 
the same thing is happening right now. Iraq is becoming and Syria becoming that home base for terrorists who will mean to destroy us. And so the irony could be, Charles, if we sit back long enough on a strategy that even Richard Engel, the NBC News chief foreign affairs correspondent, called just plain stupidity. If we sit back long enough, we are going to be faced with the choice of going in in a full scale invasion if they grow and metastasize as they have been. And look, in the end, the greatest tragedy of this is, as David Petraeus, the architect of the surge, told the Washington Post last month in an interview, the greatest tragedy of this is that it was unnecessary. As Obama himself said in December 2011, we are leaving Iraq stable, secure, and sovereign, and self-reliant. And as a result of the vacuum he created, we have Iran rushing in on one side. It's now essentially in control of the regime in Baghdad. And ISIS, on the other side, establishing a caliphate, coming into the vacuum. This was a predictable result, and as Petraeus says, a tragic one, because Obama chose to do it in a circumstance where there was no compulsion for us to completely evacuate Iraq as he did. Mm. And that's why we're going to have to redo this, but not by an invasion, but by cleverly using surrogates on the ground and by arming them, for God's sake. Charles, thank you for your expertise on it. My pleasure.